Alrighty, fellow travelers, welcome back to Adventures of a Traveling Dawn and our continued series here in the Balkans. We are here in the beautiful capital city of Slovenia, the city of Ljubljana. And I know that's a little bit of a mouthful to say. That took me about three tries to <laughs> get that right. Every time, it's just, the way that it's spelt is just, uh, you know, it's odd as a, uh, an American English speaker. So, but anyway, we are here in Svezda Park starting off. This is kind of one of the central parks here in Old Town. We're gonna explore all of Old Town and just kind of see what there is to do because it is absolutely gorgeous. The architecture is very kind of like Austro-Hungarian, mixture of Gothic. Uh, it is just absolutely fantastic. And of course, it is cut in half by a river. We'll go up and explore the castle on the hill. We'll kind of do all of that today. But first, we need something to eat. So let's go and get some breakfast. Okay, so before we go get breakfast, I did want to point out a couple of different, honestly, I can point out all the buildings in this old town, but the one behind me is the University of Ljubljana. Absolutely fantastic structure. I think it was built in 1902, but it started as a university in 1919 uh, after the First World War. And then of course you also have the uh, Academy of Philharmonica on the other side of the square here. And honestly, there's just so many great buildings. There's even back, that way is like uh, the Holy Trinity Church. It's just a phenomenal kind of park and square to come to. And just really for like pictures, for Instagram, whatever, great place to come and check out. And here right in front of the university, they do have a historical plaque so you can read about a little bit of the history of not just, of course, the university, but um, some of the contributions to math, science, art, poetry that happened here in, in Slovenia. You know, a lot of, lot of contributions did come from uh, are now Slovenians. So it's kind of cool. Very good history. But anyway, like I said, beautiful building. So for breakfast to fuel up, we're at a place called Le Petit Cafe. It's kind of on the south side of Old Town, and it's kind of modeled after like a traditional French cafe. So if you've ever been to Paris or Lyon, uh, it kind of takes up that vibe. It even has a lot of French memorabilia all around the walls. It's actually really kind of cool. And I just got myself what's called their Le Petit Breakfast. So it's just a nice omelet with croissant, homemade jam, honey, local honey butter, and then of course a little basket of bread. If you need some more, you can always ask for more. And then, of course, a small glass of orange juice. All this for about 9 euros and 30 cents. So, not a bad deal when you're looking for something for breakfast real quick. So, we'll try this omelet root real fast. Nothing in it, just a pure omelet. Nice and pulpy, very good. A little bit of that croissant. Great croissant. Let's even try the jam a little bit, just a little taster of the jam. Ooh, that's nice. I'm not even sure which berry. I it taste like some blackberries, but there's something else in there that's a little bit more tart. By the way, that's really good. Yeah. You're looking for kind of a quick breakfast or brunch? The Petit Cafe on the south side? Really nice. Seriously, everywhere you look in this old town of Ljubljana, it's just you find something different. It's amazing. Like I'm just, I came down here on the south side. We're actually going to go see a couple of old Roman ruins because uh, there used to be a Roman settlement here uh, before it transitioned into Ljubljana in the Middle Ages. But you have this kind of like cool canal. This is not part of the river. This is a man-made canal that runs through. And then of course you end up here at uh, the church of St. John the Baptist. But still it's like everywhere I go in this city, at least within the old town district, it's just fantastic. It's gorgeous. Another beautiful thing about uh, Ljubljana is the fact that it seems to be a very artsy, particularly musical city because I've been walking around the city now for a couple of days and I've passed by probably two or three different musical schools 
And a lot of times I just, you, all of a sudden you'll hear some soprano practicing, you know, her vocal warm-ups or doing some notes for whatever song that she's singing. But it's just, it's absolutely fantastic. Just imagine you're just walking along and all of a sudden you start hearing some, some opera belting out from the room, <laughs> from the window next to you. You're like, you don't hear that in a lot of cities. So I just found that really kind of cool. Another beautiful part of Ljubljana. So like I said earlier, Ljubljana used to actually be a Roman settlement called Emona. And they actually have a little thing about a quick bit of the history here. It goes back to about 2,000 years. And of course, this wall just outside of the school, or the Solski uh, School Center is part of what used to be a much higher Roman wall. And they even have, what's kind of cool, is they have a map of what the, basically, the village used to look like. And then a kind of a little trail you can follow and see different sites along the way that are Roman. So we'll kind of walk part of it and uh, see what we can see of the old uh, Roman Emona, or yeah, Emona village. this guy is standing just reminds me of my father it's like he's ready to tell me off for doing something stupid again ah the memories and now this grumpy face reminds me of my grandpa actually reminds me of both my grandpas grandpa steve and grandpa george just just look at that grumpy face why are you so grumpy? He's always asked my grandpa George particularly that. Why are you so grumpy? And he's just like, <laughs> Of course, that was back when he was in a home, so. But I can understand that. <laughs> Even still. That's now two statues that have reminded me of my dad and my, grandpa my grandfather's when they're at their grumpiest. A grumpy statue. All right, so the next spot that we're visiting here in Ljubljana, and really, this could be its own video in and of itself if you really wanted to deep dive into this place, and that is Park Tivoli. So I know you guys might think, and wait a second, Tivoli Park, that is the amusement park in Copenhagen. However, they do have a Park Tivoli, and this is more of a massive large city park that has statues, it has got a nice pond, it's got playgrounds, it's got a lot of open fields. It's just a great place to kind of come and kind of explore. We won't explore all of it in this video because like I said, it's a huge, huge park. But we'll kind of walk around and kind of see what we can, and then we'll head back into Old Town and then of course get up to the castle next. All right, so we are back in Old Town, particularly here along the riverfront. And this is what's kind of cool about uh, Ljubljana is the fact that it does have a river that kind of splits Old Town in half, uh, and that is the Ljubljanica River. Uh, now, there are four different uh, footpaths, uh, major pedestrian paths that do cross here in Old Town. Uh, this will be the first one here that we'll go ahead and cross as we head up towards the castle. Might actually stop and grab something to eat before we go up there, because I've been walking for the last two, three hours. As you can see though, you can also take on the river, you can take little boat cruises to kind of give a nice little river view. Uh, and it does actually circumvent the entire part of the east side of Old Town. So actually all of Old, e Old Town East Side and the hill with the, uh, the castle up top, that I believe is all technically considered an island because you have the little Ljubljanica and then this is the big Ljubljanica River and they all converge back into just the Ljubljanica River as it heads south. But it is kind of cool. You know, I, I love 
these kind of old European towns that have rivers that kind of go through them just kind of gives it a lot of great character. So, but anyway, let's find something really quick, a bite to eat, and then uh, we'll uh, go ahead and climb that uh, hill up to the castle. So we're going to be sticking along the water for lunch today at a place called Cafe Rome uh, Romeo. And uh, it's not at any way a uh, Slovenian place. This is actually kind of like a fusion food restaurant. So what I got myself was the, uh, is it a little chili outside? I'm going to get the chili con carne. So this is Slovenian Mexican fusion. I've been to Mexico. I've had plenty of chili con carne. So we're going to try this out and see how they do here in Slovenia. Smells good. No, yeah, it's not bad. A decent amount of spice. I mean, it's not as spicy as I would usually get it if you were in Mexico or even like Tex-Mex. But you know, it's actually flavor-wise. That's not bad, particularly being in Europe. Very good, well done. All right, time to begin the climb up to the castle. There are multiple paths up, and there is also a uh, funicular that you can take. I think it's like four euros or something one way. But I think today, beautiful day like this, we'll just take our time, climb the hill. And as you can see, we have now officially made it into Ljubljana Castle atop the hill. And this is an awesome place. It actually is still functionally in use quite a bit. Like they still have up here, um, you know, obviously it's a tourist thing for the historical purposes, but they also do have cafes, wine bars, uh, they have galleries. Some of the galleries, they have like an escape room in here. A lot of that stuff you do have to pay for, but to just to come into the castle grounds in and of itself is free. And there are a couple of exhibits that you can visit uh, within the castle itself that is free as well. So you got a couple options when it comes to all that. There's even like a theater here. Obviously, like I said, there is a uh, funicular that comes right up beneath the castle. So there's several different ways to get up to it as well. But it is a 15th century Habsburg uh, castle that was built basically to defend uh, Ljubljana and this area of Slovenia from Ottoman invasions. And it's absolutely well-preserved and fantastic. Now, of course, more than anything, the most impressive thing about this castle, whether you're on top of the walls like I am here or outside the walls on top of the hill, the views are what sell it the most. Absolutely gorgeous. You can see the mountains in the background. Just look at those. Oh, I want to go up there and go skiing. It looks absolutely fantastic. And it's from every angle, you know, that you can get up to the walls, and this is, I think, facing the north side, but you can't go up the walls on the south side. However, the south and the uh, west-facing side, of course, of the hills, you still get great views of particularly Old Town. So, like I said, this part of the castle to come up here is free, uh, just in this little section. The rest of it... Um, a lot of that you do have to pay for. And it starts, I think, at about 12 euros and adds on from there, depending on uh, what else you add to it. But even still, just to climb up the hill, get these views and just kind of enter the castle, get some pictures and stuff, doing all that for free, that's a good deal for me. Well, look who found the wine storeroom. 
this is actually for the restaurant that's up that spiral staircase. Uh, but <laughs> I ended up walking in here and I was like, well, hello. Look at all this wine. And there's even a wine mural up top as well, which does look actually really cool. By the way, when you're done with the castle and you want to just kind of a nice little walk for a little while, the uh, the park just outside of the castle here, you basically go out right out the front gate and you have miles of trails that kind of dot the entire top of this hill or mount, small mountain, shall we say. And it goes like, cause the, the part where the castle is just a piece of this island. It's like this whole area just stretches out for a couple different miles and then it's just kind of zigzags uh, up and down the mountainside. So yeah, if you're looking for a nice little nature walk at any point in time, you don't even have to come up to the castle for it. This is a great place to come and just get lost in nature. By the way, if you come down from the funicular, which takes you kind of like on the north side of Old Town, right across the street from it is actually a Ljubljana sign, a welcome sign. So if you need a picture for the gram, this is where you come. And if you can see, it says, wow, Ljubljana. Because when you come to Ljubljana, you say, wow. Well, it's either wow or it's V-V-O-V-V. -V -V. Vuvu vuvu vuvu, Ljubli Ljubljana which would not surprise me given Slavic language. I never understand it. There's more consonants in it than I've ever seen in my life. But yeah, if you're looking for a sign picture, right there. Speaking of the north side of Old Town, this is also where the Central Market Square is. And this is a permanent farmer's market. They do it, I believe, every day, except maybe Sunday. I think it's every day. Anyway, they do it generally from, I believe, about 7 or 8 a.m. in the morning to about 3 p.m. As you can see, they're just starting to close up shop for most of the shops here. A lot of them weren't even open today because it is still winter time as I'm filming this. I'm sure during the summertime, every single one of these tables is just full of produce, of souvenirs, handmade goods, all that stuff. But if you are looking for a market to peruse while you are in Ljubljana, the central uh, farmer's market on the north side is the place to come to. Oh look, it's what I look like after a few drinks. And that's what I look like the next morning after said drinks. Now the next place I want to kind of note for you guys is the Dragon Bridge of Ljubljana. It is a stone bridge that was built, I believe, in 1900, between 1900 and 1901. And it's relatively impressive. It's nothing super crazy. However, the dragons I do want to point out, there are four dragons, one on each pillar on either sides of the entrances to the bridge. And it's not necessarily what they represent for the bridge in and of itself. It's the fact that you see dragons everywhere you go in Ljubljana. There's depictions, artworks, people sell dragon memorabilia, dragon plushies, things like that. And the reason behind that is, is what I learned was the fact that somewhere not too far from the Ljubljana marshes, there's a lake somewhere near here, uh, not Lake Bled, but there's another lake somewhere around here where Jason and the Argonauts in Greek mythology came up uh, through here and then ended up slaying a dragon somewhere here in this area of Slovenia. So I don't even think it's supposed to be this town. I think it's another town further up into the mountains. But they basically adopted that as kind of like a symbol, I think, of the entire country, to be fair, if not at least the city, because you find dragon memorabilia and art everywhere in Ljubljana. Personally, I like dragons, so I think that's kind of cool. But it was just something that you're going to notice when you walk around. It's like, what's with all this mystical dragon stuff? Well, you can blame Jason and the Argonauts for that.
So just like with most of the capitals in Europe, one of the major functions and features of the city is of course gonna be its cathedrals and churches. And there's several of them throughout Ljubljana to check out. However, this particular one, the Cathedral of St. Nicholas is well worth it. It's about two euros to enter, but even before you enter on the outside, it's fantastic. It's done in a Baroque style, but the big draw are these doors. There's one to the side entrance is the one you go through uh, to get into the church. That one's really cool. This one though, seems to tell a story. I don't even know what the story is, but it's just, the artwork is absolutely, and the craftsmanship is exceptional for the door. And then I can tell you, you go inside and it's one of the most beautiful churches when it comes to the artwork that frames across the walls, the dome, it's amazing. And it's actually one of the newer cathedrals uh, compared to you think of, you know, Notre Dame before obviously Notre Dame burned down. Um, but it was built in the 1800s. I think it was like, or 18th century, excuse me. It's like 1701 to 1706 is when this particular cathedral was built. Now, the entire thing was not fully finished, I think, um, until like the 1800s, uh, particularly the artwork. Uh, so by like the mid 19th century, the artwork that you see in there was pretty much all as it is that you see it now. But even still, it's really cool. And like I said, to me, these doors are just worth checking out because they're awesome craftsmanship. Okay, so after all of this hiking and walking, I think I deserve a little treat, maybe a couple of treats. And the first one we're gonna do is we're coming to basically this chocolate shop right behind me. I think it is called uh, Chocolandica Kukarek. Don't know if I got that right. But anyway, just look for the chocolate shop here in Old Town. That place is really cool. I mean, they have chocolate in all different types of forms, different styles of chocolate. It was a chocolate heaven in there. I even got myself something to tide me over for the next couple days before I leave Slovenia. And that is their Tenma chocolate, their dark chocolate with flower honey. You can actually, they have a little tasting thing in there. We can go in, take a couple of little um, nibbles of different types that they have. This one included, so I was like, this tastes really good. So we're gonna give this a try for you guys on camera. <laughs> oh. It's soft, but it's got a little chewiness to it because it does have that honey that's incorporated in there. Mmm. It's fantastic dark chocolate. And yeah, if you're looking for some sweets, particularly some chocolate, you gotta come to this place. Now, of course, we were at the Triple Bridges uh, in the last video, if you guys watched that one, but I did want to point them out on this particular video because, you know, we're doing a whole thing about Ljubljana. And they're really kind of cool because uh, particularly the middle one here uh, was built in the 1800s, and then the subsequent two on either side were built, I believe, in sometime in the uh, early 1900s. Um, just kind of like, I don't know if they were trying to alleviate traffic or what's going on. But anyway, it connects, uh, I think it's Presenov Square with, of course, uh, Eastern Old Town. So yeah, I think it's just kind of cool that you have like three different bridges and they, they you know, they technically go the same way, but they're all kind of just slightly diverted off. And it just is, it's a nice kind of architectural aesthetic uh, to the city, particularly the river. It's just, it's really kind of cool. And Presenov Square is absolutely fantastic. Another one of these beautiful squares here in Ljubljana that just has amazing Hungarian, Austrian style architecture. It's just, uh, I have fallen in love with this city. And of course, the second treat is a lovely, fantastic, delicious beer. So, <laughs> got myself just a uh, nice big old half liter of Slovenian beer. Cheers to you guys. Oh, that's good stuff. Let me check another one. Oh. 
Oh. That feels nice. After that long hike. And it's actually even better after some chocolate. Anyway, excuse me while I finish this. So if you're gonna go out big, you might as well go out big. And we are at a place called Sestitsa. And this is the oldest restaurant in Ljubljana. And it was founded, I believe, in 1776. I don't know if it's been in operation the entire time, but the restaurant itself has been in operation, or has, was founded in 1776. The same year the United States declared independence from Britain. We weren't even a country yet. We, had, we were just a bunch of colonies trying to fight for our freedom from taxation and all the other fun stuff. But it's just like, it's fascinating that other side of the world, you know, this restaurant was open. Maybe they were even discussing what those uh, silly colonists were doing against the great British empire. But anyway, we're gonna start off with their seasonal pumpkin soup with a little ricotta cheese. First and foremost, the soup looks phenomenal. And we're gonna go ahead and try it real quick. It looks like they even have like a little, maybe a little, some kind of either balsamic or some oil that they put in there. Mm. Oh, that's fantastic. That is so good. They even like drop a little pepitas in there so you can have a little pumpkin seeds on top. Man, one of the best pumpkin soups I've ever had. That is delicious. All right, so for the main dish, I basically ended up getting a roast pork dish with potatoes. And this is kind of a traditional uh, Slovenian pig. So it's a specific type of pig um, that, they or that they breed here in Slovenia. So it just comes with a sauce that I think makes use some of like the juices from the roast pork with maybe a little salt pepper or some uh, vegetable um, puree mixed into it. So we're gonna try this real quick. It's just, oh, it smells so good. I love me some roast pork. That is fantastic. Actually, that sauce is phenomenal. Even like these potatoes I have here. Mm. Damn, that is great pork. Yeah. And that's actually not too expensive either. I think the pork dish is like, um, just under 15 euros. And then the, the the pumpkin soup is about six. So you're looking at about 20 euros for the soup and the pork. That does you in pretty well for a night. And absolutely delicious, both of these dishes. All right, I'm stuffed. My goodness, what a dinner. And what a great cap off to a fantastic day here in Ljubljana, Slovenia. What a beautiful city. The people here are fantastic. This country is absolutely amazing. I just wish I had more time. You know, this is actually gonna be the finale of my Balkan series. I had one more video in my mind to do, but we have a uh, rather big storm coming in tomorrow. It's supposed to pass in a day, but it's kind of like my last day in Slovenia, the day I had planned to go to the beautiful city of Bled just not happening all the tours have pretty much canceled already so it's kind of a bummer i could probably find a bus that would take me there but i don't really want to be out in the middle of no <laughs> you know out in the middle of the mountains during <laughs> during a snowstorm so we'll uh, we'll find another time to come back to slovenia and do the bled video but i hope you guys enjoyed everything here in uh slovenia as well as my entire trip both in the greece series and of course the subsequent balkan series from bulgaria all the way through Slovenia. It has been an amazing two months filming this. I hope you guys over the last several months have enjoyed all these videos coming out. If you have any questions about either this particular video or any of my videos on this trip, go ahead and leave those in the comments. I will do the best of my ability to get to those. And of course, if you liked the video, give it a big old thumbs up. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. What are you waiting for? And if you wanna help promote or support any of the future travels coming up, I've got a trip in mind coming up after this particular trip. 
and then there's going to be some other stuff going at the end of 2024. So if you want to help support that, I do have a Patreon page as well as a Buy Me a Coffee account, and I do very much appreciate the support, and I appreciate all of my members, both Patreon and the people who have helped support me on Buy Me a Coffee. You guys have been lifesavers, particularly during this trip. Uh, some of those donations, particularly during Christmas time, came at the right time, and they have made a great difference in this trip, and I so very much appreciate it. So, But anyway, guys, until we meet again, peace out and have a great night. Thank you.